we have to quickly record this video <laughs> before <laughs> our boss wakes up. He's just around the corner. In his around spirit. the corner. He's just there. <laughs> He's just there. So yeah, welcome to another video here on the channel. Me plus you is us. My name is Kwame and I hope you can see my face. Yes. Why not? No, I'm just... I'm just oh, not... okay. My name is Elaine. <laughs> What? I was just making sure, like, I hope they can see my face. Like, you know, I hope the frame is nice. That's all I was saying. Okay, I'm sure it's nice. Yeah. So today we're going to record uh, or talk about... Uh, or maybe we should introduce a new... What? Partner in... A new partner? A new partner in me plus you is us, no? Us, oh, us yes. became a bit oh, bigger. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're yeah, just yeah, like... Yeah. <laughs> Because we are recording on borrowed time. I just want to go, go, go. Okay, so Me Plus You Is Us has now become... A threesome. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Not in that way. Kind of. I mean, it's now three people part of the us. Yeah, but it's not like a threesome in, in the way that, yeah, a threesome is. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we're back. <laughs> we don't know how long we have until our boss wakes up. And um, yeah, we just uh, welcomed our son or a, a baby. baby boy. Yeah. Into the family. So me plus you is us is now what? Family of three. It's now a family of three. And uh, we've been with this guy for a month. <laughs> <laughs> It's been quite interesting. Yeah, we've made a few discoveries because before we started or before we started this journey with him, you know, during the pregnancy, we were looking at all these videos or watching videos, trying to learn how to, I mean, survive the first few weeks. And there's a lot on the Internet. Yeah. Yeah. So much of the Internet that people are sharing. And so we're going to see which of the ones that we learned or we discovered that are actually truths or myths according to what we've experienced so some of the things that we saw online that works mm -hmm. or don't work yeah yeah so that's what we're discussing in today's video and the first one actually applies to this i don't know if you can see the bags under our eyes <laughs> we're going they through it there. <laughs> yes the first one is the word sleep when yeah. the baby sleeps. You have a lot of people saying, yeah, you need to sleep when the baby sleeps. And there are a lot of um, jokes and memes about how or why that doesn't work. Yeah. And I think even now, like we're caught when the baby sleeps. As yeah. you can see, we had to take a small break just to comfort <laughs> him. And it doesn't really work like that. Because when your baby sleeps, yes, <laughs> she's not asleep. <laughs> Um, he sleeps, yes, but there are also other things you need to do. You need to eat, you need to shower, you need to clean up, clean the house. Yeah, you need to cook. So, and averagely in the beginning, the baby eats every two, three hours, depending on sometimes four if, if the meal or if it's breastfed well, sometimes it goes beyond maybe three and a half hours. And yeah, but that it doesn't mean you have three hours because you have almost an hour to feed. So what you have is two hours in between. And you also need to take care of yourself as in very like the very um, basic things like eat, sleep, go to the washroom, um, all these things. Yeah. All in these two hours. So it doesn't really. It doesn't really count as three hours, three hours of free time. No. Yeah. It always feels you're on borrowed time. <laughs> and yeah and, and and we're at this particular phase right now where he's going through a growth um, spurt mm -hmm. at the moment so even that three hours has now been shortened to an hour an hour and 45 minutes at most sometimes even shorter so you now it feels like you're feeding cleaning putting to bed and repeat because he's up in the next five minutes by the time yeah. they're done it's also because they so they have a growth spurt so they need a lot of extra food so it's pretty impossible to get anything else done than feed him. <laughs> yeah. So sleep when the baby sleeps doesn't apply to... No, it's not, it's not a logic that works. I don't know no. at which point this may work. Maybe when they have longer sleep um, maybe, times. Yeah. Maybe when it's six hours. 
Or when even they, four. Yeah, when I would they are, sign for four. Yeah, like, I would when they are way older and they are sleeping longer, then maybe you can also nap. But it's not like sleep, sleep. You have like 45 minutes to an yeah. hour max of yeah. uh, napping. But that, that also takes a lot of discipline, actually. The naps? Yeah, I mean, you're tired, but... Yeah. It's not always that sleep comes to you or... Yes, but I think that's the whole thing. This a baby disrupts your whole schedule because I was even thinking like, when will I sleep in like a full eight hours again? <laughs> <laughs> that might be never. Not in the first year, yeah. or maybe when the baby is with somebody else. But you're not gonna give your baby to somebody else to just take care well, of. Well, maybe family or something or close friends, but. Yeah. So yeah, it just disrupts. Yeah. Like you just have. I am not a night owl, so I'm really struggling with the nights. I'm also struggling with the nights as well. We're we're trying our schedules or um yeah rotations or shifts to work, but um yeah, it's still not the easiest thing to do. And no. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear him. We're just making sure to see if it's just an active sleep and he's not gonna come. One thing, something. Oh, his eyes are closed. Let's go in there. Okay. Yeah. Let's go to the next one real quick. <laughs> <laughs> the second one is you can't solve everything. Hmm. This one doesn't apply to me. No. Yeah. So I am the kind of person who wants, like, I see him in distress and I think that, oh, no, I should fix it. Or I hope I can just make it go away. And I want to calm him. I want to clean him. I want to do this. I want to just stop it, you know. Mm. To, to get it the, the whole distress over with and um, over time we've learned that there are different kinds of cries and what it means and what you can do and what you can't do some of them are cramps and cramps come and you can't do anything about it unless maybe you want to give them gripe water but then of course when it comes to medication or medicines you also have to be really careful what you're giving your child so yeah, yeah. but maybe explain how the cramps come like why do they get cramps so they get cramps uh, for a few reasons one they are gastrointestinal um, bowels or bowels or whatever are developing so it's not that it's processing the food as quickly as the adult person would so yeah. they get gassed up really quickly um, when they're eating as well eating very fast or when you don't burp them properly all these things that accumulate to or add up to yeah causing them to have cramps and when the cramps come depending on how intense it is we've seen really really intense cramps like yeah. some that make you want to cry with him because you can't do anything about it so yeah he he really clenches you as well like he he just twitches and yeah it's and, and really it's literally like clawing through you like, you know, it's painful. Help me. Why is it not going Yeah, away? and you can't explain to him because yeah. he's a small, like, he's a baby. You can't say, like, yeah, I just have to get through this. I mean, we're telling him <laughs> that, but of course, it's, it's hard when, to I think when see. he hears that, he cries even harder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. true. So you can't solve everything. And you, all, all sometimes you can do is just um, comfort and support and just be there for the baby. Yeah. Sometimes that's all you can do. And you shouldn't try to fix everything. Mm. Yeah. I'm I'm still learning I'm, I'm, that. Yeah. That's part of parenthood. Yeah. I don't I, I don't know if I'll learn it completely, but I'm still there. Uh, I'm learning. And yeah, of course, this one is very self explanatory. No two babies are the same. So if you have um mm -hmm. friends in your circle. Who, yeah, or family. I are, mean parents also like to comment a lot. Yeah on what to do and what not to do and i think for us we are trying to find our own way of course we are open for advice but you also instinctively kind of already get to know your baby yeah and i don't think everything applies and also even if you look at your parents that was a very different generation like the information that was out there was very different mm -hmm. uh, on like how to care for your baby like I know, for example, in my parents' generation, they were really warning you not to pick up your baby too much because yeah. they were scared that it was going to be too depending on you. Yeah, it's going to and... be too codependent. Yeah. And so so I, I think I saw this meme um, the other day on Facebook uh, where people are telling mothers what to do. Um, 
don't pick up your baby too much, but also why is your baby crying? Like, yeah. why are you allowing your baby to cry? <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, and all these things that are contradictory um, advice mm -hmm. that people tend to yeah. give. Um, no two babies are the same. Only you know yeah. what you and your baby are going through and you understand your baby very well. You're literally spending almost 24 hours a mm -hmm. day with this person or this baby and it's just rotation after rotation. So sometimes, yeah, you know how to soothe or care for the baby and sometimes the advice people give tend to, oh, okay, actually it works or it's changed the way you see yeah. And care for the baby. But I th I think you get a feel of what works for your baby and not. And you just try out a lot of things as well. Like with the cramps, somebody learned us like that. Taught us, yeah. Ha taught us how to... Um, my English is <laughs> vanishing. <laughs> how to put the baby on the arm and then they get pressure on the belly. But he doesn't really like that, that kind of... No, he doesn't. Like, he just wants to be held, like, vertically and yeah, walked around. And just so just walked around and just jumped, like... You uh, you you have to a lot of figuring out to do. Yeah. That's just it. He prefers the soothing bounce that you give him instead of that lying on the tummy. And, yeah, so no two babies are the same. And uh, the next one is um, going to be Elaine talking about that because breastfeeding is not for everyone. Yeah, I think... I don't know... I mean, now we're in Netherlands, so I don't know about the discourse in Ghana on breastfeeding, but it is quite hard to get your baby to latch and get him to latch, or him or her, latch well so that it doesn't hurt you physically uh, because it is not easy. Your breasts are not used to feeding yet. Uh, things are sensitive or are painful and sometimes... Um, you will not produce enough milk like that can sometimes your baby doesn't want to latch um maybe your baby falls asleep immediately when you latch him there's a lot of like things and i understand i am trying to breastfeed as much as i can because i feel i want to try but i can understand that women choose not to do this because it's literally another job on another job because you're already caring for an, for a very small person and then you're also giving out literally so much energy yeah and so much like you're literally producing food so you yourself you have to even eat more i think she said 400 ca calories extra uh, you, you, you give yeah, out you give out 400 calories anytime that's like a full feet. meal yeah. So you have to really, really step up your eating. You need to drink enough. You need to make sure you are not stressed. Otherwise, um, your milk doesn't flow. Like, it is really uh, a difficult thing to navigate. Our boss is calling. Let's give it a few seconds. We'll be back. Okay, where were we? Oh, breastfeeding is not for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, so I think um, I understand why women don't do it. Why you decide to do formula and that's fine too. I think we should be a bit more gentle on women. Of course, um, uh, breast milk has uh, its advantages, but... Yeah, very high advantages. Yes. But you, 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 it's not your body, first of all. And yes. Not every woman's body produces the same amount of breast milk, and not everybody, uh, not every woman's uh, breasts react to uh, react well with breastfeeding as a process. And sometimes there are infections that could happen, and everything. There's so much that could happen to the human body after that breast yeah. process. Yeah, so. and you also just gave birth to a little person, so give yourself mm -hmm. like time and grace on to figure out if that's something you want to do or not. And I really uh, benefited from the help we got in Netherlands. So they helped me with how to latch and like um, also how to see if I want to pump or do I want to breastfeed or do we are we going to do formula? So you have options. And I think that really has helped us to plan his meals better without stressing ourselves out too much. Yeah. So find your options and find the things that work for you. I think that's, yeah. I'm also still learning that one, but yeah. Much better. And I think the next one is um, It Takes Two to Tango. 
<laughs> which which is um, something I have um, come to learn and appreciate in this last month, and I, I really really doff my hat off, uh, off to all parents or single parents or parents doing it by themselves or doing most of the work because oof. it's a lot it's a lot yeah. and it is really nice to do it together because you can really work as a team but it also requires you to really communicate and it really requires you to also know yourself well so what we try to check in with each other, like, do you want me to take over? Are you okay? Because sometimes things get to you, like when he can cry or he's fussy and you're not sure what to do. And if it's the middle of the night, it feels like there's no end to it. It can really get to you. And um, Or with the cramps, like you you particularly found it very hard to see him like that. Yeah. And that made you very sad. So then you shouldn't walk with him too long because then you will get sad so i think i'm really grateful to do it with you because i think i would have crumbled if you were doing it alone, alone yeah. like, like if you imagine the, the amount of work that is, is done or supposed to be done and and in the beginning how especially where your heads are at you know yeah. like everything is overwhelming you're not sleeping enough um and you then just you, came from a labor like which is also an intense experience and you don't have time to process it because there's a little person wanting to eat wanting to you to change, and, change you know cleaned up and everything and then you, you're, you're also getting bombarded with um people who don't mean harm but just want to help and you're getting so many like oh no do this do that do that you know and yeah, those yeah. people who also have their very strong opinions on, yeah, you must, you know. So it's it's a lot to process and even think about um, doing alone. Yeah, and I think with us, because uh, we, I was in hospital the first few days and I couldn't do as much. So grandma really took on the diaper changing <laughs> yeah, <laughs> battle. Yeah. It's something I still very much enjoy. Yeah, and you got really good at that. So we developed first a uh, routine together. So grandma would change him, temperature him, and then uh, I would uh, feed him yeah. uh, or grandma would feed him. And especially in the beginning, I couldn't get up as quickly. So then Kwame would take that part. If he would cry, he would get out and get him. So, and then later when I was more mobile, mobile yeah. you were, we will switch it again. So now we are also um, dividing the kind of the shift, especially in the night, because if you do every shift together, like we did in the beginning, yeah, you we're won't both get waking a lot up of sleep. And doing the, I change him, she feeds. We're both, no, then we, we had to learn to do both individually so yeah. that one person can take one shift to feed and change and put them back to sleep and then the other person can sleep longer and then run 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 yeah and i just think it's good to like discuss with your partner what works because Kwame works for himself so he can space out his work a little bit but of course when somebody has to go to the office like can you ask them to do a night shift i don't know so yeah. it's it's also not the easiest things to ask of yeah. your partner so f figure out what works for you and as a partner you should also be um uh, try to do your equitable best mm -hmm. not use your work as an excuse and then everything goes to fall on the other person but if, if it's something that's working for your relationship fine but i i really can't imagine it's not being a two-person thing and um yeah or even if you don't have a partner or your partner is limited in time or I don't know, like ask for help because like, yeah, get all the help. you can Yes. Get. Like family, friends. We ask a lot of, a lot of people cooked for us like dinner in the beginning. Yeah. Um, my siblings came over to cook. Um, uh, we had uh, somebody come to, to take care of the household, like just vacuum and everything because yeah. you, we, we didn't even have time to there's a fireplace here to warm the place in the first four days we, we wouldn't didn't, even have the time even to lit the turn, fire yeah. and warm Light, the yeah. house well like it is such a like an experience in the beginning yeah um, so you really ask for help because this is like it this is not something you should do on your own in my opinion because you ask a lot of yourself and um the baby of course also feels if you're stressed or 
agitated or yeah. it's getting too much. So we try when we get there to switch and see how best we can uh, conquer it because it, it's it's a lot taking care of somebody else in, in such a dedicated way. Yeah, it's a lot. And our final point, uh, truth or myth. Well, truth, this one for us is the truth. Self-care is, is still very important. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to lose it. You're not going to, like, remember to. <laughs> you shower at 4 p.m. That's your first bath of the day because you wake up and you just go straight to work. Yeah. Taking care of the baby and, you know, trying to But I think it's survive. good to, to point out that self-care doesn't mean you have to go to spa days, like three days after giving birth. No, you can, even brushing my teeth in the beginning, hey, yeah, I was if I was able to brush my teeth in the morning, I was so happy. <laughs> yeah, because you wake up and you're already in it. <laughs> yes, like he wakes up crying. You immediately get to work. Like, okay, let's feed this this human being and <laughs> Jim put him back to sleep. And, and yes, and there's a mess in the house. You're trying to clean up. Yeah, but also, so for me, um, the shower in the morning was really important because when you just gave birth, you have a lot of hormones that have to get out of your body. Yeah. Um, and uh, some women get like a uh, sweat a lot in the nights, like it's literally sweat attacks. That's what I had. So in the morning when I would wake up, I would feel so like, Ugh, I just wanted to sh shower the Wash night down, off yeah. because I also had a lot of, uh, yeah, you're processing the whole birth thing. So there's a lot going on in the night and, I just wanted to shower to start fresh, like not think too much about how the night was, but just, you know, start cleaning those 10 minutes to shower. Then Kwame would be with the baby. Yeah, it would really help me to, yeah, start on a positive note. Yeah. And, um, but I think you also did a bit of self-care, right? Yeah. And, and now that we're getting the hang of it, sometimes uh, when family or a friend visits and is staying longer, uh, we... we we give the other person grace, uh, which Elaine is doing very well for me, that, okay, you just go and spend time with this person or go out for two hours and go do this activity for yourself just to clear your mind or something. Yeah. So, yeah, it's 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 uh, also checking in, um, which I, I had not been doing so much of because I was just go, 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 concentrating on the baby and you know i've gotten reminders over time that yeah check in with your partner as well it's, it's, it's uh, really really important to check in with your partner know that they also need something sometimes it's not even just they want a break to go out or do anything but just that you're aware of um, their mental health needs as well and you're asking if there's something you can do for them and then you do it um to the best of your ability and give them that, you know, room to also calm down and just be mentally um, yeah. up there enough to still be a team player, which is, which is really, really um, important that we've come to. Yeah. Find. But I also think it's like, it's important to, I mean, of course it's early now, but it's important to sometimes not be the parent. Like you are more than just a parent to this new baby. Yeah. You are also a person and, um, I know Kwame needs to out, go out from time to time just to do something for himself or check some things out or meet, like, do something new just to, you know, get his, yeah, keep you happy. Like, you happy yourself by, yeah. Doing the things that you... Having a few hours for yourself. And I understand that. So for me, I am not, because I'm still recovering and... I don't crave the outside as much, but I do like, so when the weather is good, to like yesterday, do a walk. For example, we, walk. we went for a walk. Yeah. yeah. And that one helps me to also, okay, there's more than <laughs> the inside of this house and there's more than, um, yeah, there's the outside as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> outside world exists. I have been going outside a lot because I have to um, um, do grocery shopping and, and yeah. Since she can't move around a lot, I'm the one who drives um, everywhere. Or oh, I'm do I do the driving, and yeah, I mean I take it upon myself to like make sure that she, both of them are not like caught up in any kind of like oh we don't have this or this wasn't done or this. So yeah. it's, it's a real um, partnership. Yeah, and it's a balance yeah. it's for you to be a new parent, but also you're also so you see each other in a new role, but you also 
are still your own person and you are a partner. So it's yeah. it's it's a lot to navigate and we are not done, but it's been a steep we're not learning. Done. What do you mean we're not done? <laughs> like, I no, don't think I it's mean, ever done. No, but I mean... We've just begun. <laughs> it has been a very steep learning curve. Yeah, very steep. I think that's also what... These are just small, like, nuggets, but it has been a s steep learning curve on, yeah, a, a lot of things. Yeah. Not only... It's not only about the newborn, it's also about us discovering uh, about your new role how do yeah. you feel in your new role what do you need to stay sane and yeah. what a role is asking of you and how you're going to navigate that yeah and also expectations of out other people yeah or like people want to help but not everything works so yeah it's 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 a new level of life <laughs> <laughs> opening up to us yeah it feels like I was describing to a friend. I don't know if I can say it well in English, but so like you feel like, OK, you know, life, you know yourself. You have found somebody you're spending your life with. It's like I'm not saying like it's, it's steady. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's still things that life throws at you, but you, you have kind of a foundation. But now it feels like there's a little um, hatchet that is opened up. Yeah. And you fell through it and suddenly you're in a new level. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It, it literally feels like that. It's a like a, it's like a new level, like a checkpoint. And now everything has changed. It's like they've just switched the maze. Yeah. And then they've put different things in there. Like whoa. Like, yeah. You know. So now. But I like. I think um, somebody. I think a friend of yours said that that. Um, and I believe that too. Like everything you have experienced so far in your life has prepared you for this. Yeah. And um, babies also come with. I don't know how he said it. He said babies come with that the universe, like you, you have committed to care for this baby, and the universe will collude, yeah, to kind of support you, yeah, and it will show up in people, but also opportunities like work opportunities, and it's it's all there to to push you forward, yeah, push you and your yeah your new person. If forward. you couldn't do it, you wouldn't you you wouldn't be in a position yeah so yeah and yeah that's us <laughs> with our bags under our eyes <laughs> trying to make sense of it all <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah we we share what we, we've processed and this is our channel me plus you is us yes stay tuned for more <laughs> conversations conversations and insights on this new part of our life yeah and Luckily, we all, um, we're done recording and our voice didn't get up again. Yes. So we managed. Yeah. One down. Yep. And many more to go. Yes. All right. Catch you later. Definitely give me a How do you say it? Definitely. Dag. Dag allemaal. Dag allemaal. Or what do you want to say? You say dag lieve mensen. Oh, dag lieve mensen. Yes. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Dag lieve mensen. <laughs>